Welcome back, and to those of you who are new, a happy hello. I'm Jackie Kay, one of the many talented hosts over here at Fat Ninja Studios. And with January here, my eyes can almost taste the spectacular WandaVision on the horizon. On a previous list, we talked about some predictions we had for the upcoming phases in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And that got us thinking, what are some characters we would personally like to see make their big screen debuts? And then we got to thinking even more, who will we want to see our titular heroes face off against? With an incredible abundance of villains that haven't made it to the silver screen just yet, we plucked a few out from our favorite storylines, and so without much delay, here's 12 supervillains we're hoping to see in the MCU. Number 1, Korak. A cyborg from the future who can manipulate genetics in order to make himself imperceivable to other living creatures. I mean, what? Part of the Korvac Saga comic arc. He takes on everyone from the Guardians of the Galaxy to gods like Odin, a formidable opponent to say the very least. Number 2, Mephisto. Outside of Hela and Thor Ragnarok, we haven't really had a representation of death. No, Red Skull on Vormir doesn't count. And we didn't get death herself during the Thanos saga, or any kind of hell yet. However, we do know it exists through Doctor Strange's film and the Chaos Realm from which Wanda, aka Scarlet Witch, extracts her powers. But I digress. We're here to talk about Mephisto! We already got a little mention of him in the Tesseract file. It says that he was asked to aid in studying the cube itself. Curious if he was just in a human body going by that name, or if they actually approached a giant devil god. With that in mind, the character deserves to make his on-screen appearance in all his devilish glory, as he is part of many storylines and has fought against almost every single hero in the Marvel Universe at one time or another. The way we'd like to see him make his entrance, though, is the iconic story of Doctor Doom's origin, in which he takes the soul of Cynthia Von Doom until Doctor Strange and Doom himself free her so she can go to heaven. More on Doom later. Number 3, Kang the Conqueror. A time-traveling dictator who at one point in the comics successfully took over the world. He is a massively dangerous foe, with almost unlimited technological advancements at his disposal. And without Tony Stark currently in the MCU to rival him, he could quite easily pose a threat to the remaining Avengers. Who knows, this would be an interesting way to even get Cable and Bishop into the MCU. Number 4, Galactus. If you don't know who Galactus is, then you're not a fan of the Fantastic Four to say the least, as the cosmic entity has played a major role in many of their stories. Forgetting his appearance in the Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer film, where they did him the injustice of turning him into a giant cloud, Galactus doesn't have a true form, appearing as whatever deity those who witness him envision him as. Think almost like Pennywise, just less clown-eating children and more like devouring entire planets for their energy and matter. Galactus is neither evil nor good. He is a universe constant, which makes it hard to truly classify him as a supervillain, but just imagine the looming threat of the Earth being swallowed by a titanic being, and then out of nowhere, it's... It's Reed Richards with the ultimate nullifier! Wait, what? Number 5, Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom is probably one of the most challenging villains in the Marvel Universe as a whole. He has dabbled in technology, in magic, in genetic abilities, you name it, all in the service of achieving more power. He also has one of the more tragic backstories of any villain in Marvel, and will do anything to protect the people of his home, Latveria. Forget the film portrayals of him as a jealous, jilted lover of Sue Storm. Victor Von Doom is so much more, and we can't wait to see him finally done justice on the big screen. Depending on how old they decide to make him, I nominate Jason Isaacs for the role. Number 6, Modoc. 
AIM was established in Iron Man 3, and while Killian was defeated in that film, AIM didn't necessarily just go away. Enter MODOK, mechanized organism designed only for killing. While recent stories have retconned most of MODOK's origins, he's still a force to be reckoned with. His abilities include psionic powers, superhuman intellect, and probability manipulation. With upcoming shows like Miss Marvel and films like New Avengers, he would make a perfect villain to challenge the younger, fresher heroes in place of the void left by Hydra after they were taken down by Cap and friends. Adding growing concerns with the Sokovia Accords, or possibly even the Mutant Registration Act, and we could see AIM soldiers taking over cities as a pseudo-SS law enforcement. Number 7, Beyonder. A member of an otherworld super omnipotent species called the Beyonders, he is pulled through into our universe by a tachyon beam wielded by a supervillain group called Intel, as they try to capture a vibranium meteorite. As he observed Earth, he began to view humans as incomplete, and thus sought to remedy this through various experiments, mainly tackling the idea of desire. However, in time, he began to realize that this very action meant he was also incomplete, as he chased desire himself to forge ahead with his experiments. He battles the likes of Molecule Man, Doctor Doom, and even Charles Xavier, but he isn't completely an evil villain, as he doesn't think on the same plane as mortal beings would, and rather as a multiversal healer. Think Q from Star Trek, as he becomes inquisitive and enamored with humanity so much that he begins to affect the course of history by intervening in many events. He doesn't do it out of malevolence, but rather because he's become attached to their growth and well-being, even if his actions are often seen as catastrophic. In the MCU, the Beyond could affect continuity as well, being able to change reality and whatnot, therefore acting as a soft retcon machine in case they don't decide to use Cable in his time-traveling shenanigans. Number 8, Hyperion and the Squadron Supreme. Two things. First, this team is basically Marvel's version of the Justice League. Second, the team-up between Hyperion and Thor versus the Beyonders was one of the most epic things I've ever read. With that out of the way, this would be perfect for a one-off Avengers film where they come to blows over how they are supposed to be superheroing, where the Avengers mostly take a reactionary approach and the Squadron take a more aggressive, preemptive approach. In the end, however, it could lead up to them changing their ways and then joining the Avengers in future storylines. But mostly, I just want to see Hyperion and Thor team up. Against the bleak nothing of dead space, two gods fell to many. Number 9, Abraxas. The counterpart to Eternity, he is the embodiment of destruction. Think Beerus from Dragon Ball Super. He is often kept in check by Galactus, who devours energies in order to sustain his life force, and has faced many heroes, most notable the Fantastic Four. There isn't much else to say about a being with limitless power whose sole purpose is to destroy. But if we do get to see the rest of the Celestial Court, he is definitely one that needs to make an antagonistic appearance in the MCU. Number 10, Magneto. An Omega-level mutant, able to destroy the entire Earth just by manipulating the magnetic sphere, yet all he truly wants is peace for mutant kind. Until, of course, the humans begin locking them all up, experimenting on them, or executing them. And thus, he forms the Brotherhood to take vengeance and eradicate the human problem. Magneto is a perfect example of a civil rights activist who has just been pushed past his limits from watching the cruelty bestowed upon his people more than once not only as a mutant, but even through religious persecution. Of course, no Magneto storyline would be complete without his counterpart, Professor Charles Xavier. To get the comparisons of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X respectively, as they play chess with their words and try to achieve the same goal, just with different approaches. With the tone of the MCU films having shifted from standard bad guys who want to steal things, to more traumatic and deeply layered villains, 
Magneto fits perfectly. Number 12, Norman Osborn. Not only is he the perfect representation of corporate greed and dirty politics, but he also forms his own anti-Avengers team and a division called Hammer to replace the S.H.I.E.L.D. initiative. Given the politics of 2020 and social concerns, Norman Osborn would be a great commentary character as he rises to power using the fears of the people, promising them harsher punishments for those that society deems unworthy and a whole good old days platform of how things would be. Not to mention, he is one of Spider-Man's greatest foes, transforming into the hide like Green Goblin persona, and even at one point, managing to kill several of Peter's loved ones. So, what did you think? If you have a favorite supervillain that you'd like to see on the screen, or even resurrected from the dead, please feel free to leave us a comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to clobber that bell icon to stay up to date with our latest release via notifications. You can also reach out to us on Twitter, at StudiosVet, and chat to us on Discord. Link is in the description below. If you're feeling generous, please check out our Patreon. With as little as $1 a month, you can help us to keep bringing you the content that you enjoy. Of all the characters we've mentioned in our list, I'm crossing my fingers for an excellent rendition of Magneto. Not only because of the social relevance of this character, but because we've never really truly gotten to see his power to his full extent. Not to mention, the possibility of him and Professor X transforming into Onslaught, which is just a whole other level. With stories like Asteroid M and God Loves, Man Kills, there's so much character depth to draw from. The only question is, who do we get to play these amazing characters? Hmm, that gives me an idea for another list. Well, until then, this has been Jackie K for Fat Ninja Studios, and remember kids, I'm the best there is at what I do, but what I do isn't very nice.